Okay, do you want to start over? No. Yeah. Oh, hey, self-lovers, it's your boy, Paul Fishman. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited because today I'm joined by a fan favorite. Yes, I think that people like him more than me. You guessed it, I'm joined by my amazing husband, Richard, and he's going to be interviewing me about the process of getting diagnosed with pityriasis rubra pilaris, AKA PRP. If you haven't watched the part one and part two of my life with the disease, I will link it right above and uh, he also shares what it's like to be in partnership with someone who is suffering through a disease that uh, caused lots of sleepless nights and was very, very frustrating before we had a diagnosis. So if you are interested in knowing more about my journey to loving myself when it comes to having this disease, please, please stay tuned and also know that you are not alone if you're struggling through something. I'm also gonna link below some resources, whether it be my podcast or if you're feeling like getting some extra support on your journey, you can apply to join me in my six month hybrid one-on-one -on -one group program called The Self Love Diet, where I teach you how to habitually nourish the devotion to your individuality and support you every step of the way. Okay, let's get into today's video. Guess oh who's back. Back, 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 back again. Back again. All right. So, today I am going to interview this one over here about PRP. And can you tell us what PRP stands for? PRP stands for Pityriasis rubra pilaris, otherwise known as the bane of my existence. <laughs> And tell us a little bit about this PRP. Tell the, tell the people, basically, in short, what it is. So PRP is a rare skin disease that is genetic and sometimes chronic. And it starts in a small, what they call, herald patch, which is like where the infection sprouts. And it started on my upper collarbone. And we what thought- What does it look like? Well, we thought that it was ringworm when it first started, and then throughout the journey of the diagnosis, from one step to the next, we found out that it was pityriasis rubra pilaris. Okay. Which... So let's 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 stop. Let's. Um, it basically affects one in every four hundred thousand people. Mm -hmm. um, it is a rare skin disease. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned that there are different. Um, categories so the first category is like acute meaning that it can last for several years there's the atypical i didn't say any of that uh well you had mentioned that there's like se the severity can range for longer i said none of that yeah you did remind me <laughs> no literally i didn't say any of that but i love this you're yeah you're, you this is called educated so take notes <laughs> So there are there's an acute version and there's also like an, the atypical, which is it impacts I want to say like the larger percentage of adults, uh, and that can last anywhere from one to three years if you go back into remission. So the good news is is it does get better, um, and you know we're also not doctors, so we you know you need to consult with your own health health doctor or physician. Um, when it comes to that, but hey, remember when you were gonna interview me about this? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, do you want to start over? No. Yeah. No, we're not starting over. Why? Stop being such a diva. Just keep going. Okay. So. <laughs> basically. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, listen. I have no problem with that. Bye. Um, so. Why don't we rewind and let's go back to when you first started noticing that Harold patch. Yeah, so when I first started noticing the Harold patch, I thought that it was ringworm. I and this was a, like February 2021. Yeah, so it's like the end of February. Mm -hmm. um, and I started putting the regular antifungal that I had in my medicine cabinet on and it wasn't getting any better. And so was it starting to like get bigger? Did it start to spread? So it started to spread and because, you know, I like to go to holisticwebmd.com, which isn't even a thing, but like I like to try out the holistic stuff first. I thought that I would put some antifungal um, 
essential oils on the Herald patch and that just made it explode all over my chest. Yeah, so it basically, what did it look like at that point? Um, it just looked like I had a bunch of little ringworm patches all over my chest, which was abnormal. Like it didn't really, I'd never had that much before and I thought that I was doing a good job. Um, it started to spread and then let's fast forward to, um, let's go within like end of March, where were you at in terms of the spreading? Um, I don't really remember, it's all kind of a blur. It just started here and then it moved up onto my face and also started traveling down and it just took over every inch of my body. Mm -hmm. Front, back, side to side. Yeah, everywhere. So, as we progressed throughout time, um, I remember in, in May, the disease basically had spread across your entire body. And at this point, were you noticing any other issues rather than just cosmetic? Um, I mean, it was really draining energetically, uh, just navigating the ups and the downs daily during the healing journey has been interesting. Like when I, well, May and the beginning of June were like the worst. Why? Because my body not only was covered in red patches, but there were parts where it was so dry that there was like layers of dry plaque on my skin. Um, it was really painful on my knees and my elbows. And my feet and hands started kind of like shedding, like um, if I were a snake. Mm -hmm. And then my hands started getting crusty and they started, like I couldn't even straighten them because they were so dry and then my hands started cracking and my feet started cracking and my scalp was getting thick and there was an intense amount of looked like dandruff but it was just dry skin basically you called me elsa because i let it snow wherever i went and i was just leaving piles of dead skin behind everywhere Patrick, come here hey meanwhile Patrick's like get over here. uh yeah it basically looks like sawdust like that's what it looks like. It's just like dried skin literally everywhere. And and for my husband who's a little bit of a clean freak, that was probably a, a little bit. <laughs> that was probably a It was rough. It was rough for me. Um basically everywhere you went there was skin. And as I've learned over this journey, like at first I was, I would wake up in the morning and my eyes would be crusted shut. My entire face was covered in dry skin. And I, this actually prompted a couple of panic attacks while we were traveling. I'd never had a panic attack before, but I really felt helpless. And something that I've learned over this journey is just to surrender to the process, to rest, give myself permission to rest. At that point, I was showering every single day and I realized that showering actually uh, made the healing journey longer. It's been a journey for me to find the right kind of cadence of showering. However, like every other day is starting to feel good or every two days, it's really tough. Yeah, and you also forgot to leave out uh, a really big part of this, which was, I want to say, end of mid, mid to late April through basically all of June. Um, you had a really hard time sleeping. Yes. And the sleeping was, it's like his at, at night, your body would like just start itching and he was scratching everywhere um and with no sleep came you know the ups and the downs from an emotional perspective and it's definitely been a journey so just to rewind you know Feb late february the herald patch started it basically spread throughout his chest started to move up his face um covering basically everywhere um, started to go down and over the course of two months it basically had covered his entire body. Mm. Um, during that time his feet and hands became really thick with skin and really they were really dry. They all started to they both started to crack. It was hard to walk. Mm -hmm. um, and then the sleep deprivation started 
and the itching started. So for the someone had been going on for a long time. For a while. Actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we now feel like, you know, we're in the the final, you know, stretch of this. Um, you what can you what can you say like where you're at now? So where, where I'm at now is Definitely my legs are still on like the recovery journey. Um, my entire body still has patches, but there's more islands of sparing, which is what we call actual like healed skin peeking through. So my upper body uh, is experiencing a lot of islands of sparing. Most of my upper back is pretty clear. My face, as you can see, is pretty much clear. My hands, I can actually move them. The, the skin on my scalp is pretty much back to normal. And it feels as though it started here and it's healing here first and then slowly moving its way down. And what's another element to this disease that you were unaware of? You haven't been able to what? Over the past oh, like five oh, months? I haven't. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, you haven't been able to what? I haven't been able to sweat. So I haven't been sweating, which is kind of for someone who's super, super sweaty. It was weird at first because I was like, wait, I don't have to worry about ruining my clothes. I, like I didn't have to put deodorant on, like all of these things that I've had to do for the entirety of my life. And I just started sweating like a couple of weeks ago uh, when we worked sweating out away, just on my forehead. Yeah. So you're not sweating anywhere in your body. Right. Just my forehead so far. Yeah. So. Right now, um, what have you been doing to help this process over the past few months? I've just been, first and foremost, giving myself permission to rest um, and have been working through like this idea of surrendering, surrendering to the process. Why is this happening for me, not to me? I've been doing my best to keep a, an optimistic mindset about it, knowing that it's not the rest of my life, although there were moments on the journey where I, where I felt so defeated, so alone. Uh, it's really, there isn't much that you can do outside of just giving yourself space to heal. And the skin is the last, it's the, the slowest, it's the biggest organ and it's the slowest organ to heal because there's so much going on, you know? It's not like it's an isolated experience. My skin is still experiencing day-to-day -day life, going out in the sun, all these sorts of things. Yeah. So I've really found that um, rest, rest, rest has been really, really important. Listening to my body and um, making sure that after I shower that I'm drying off 100% putting on lotion um, and now I'm kind of experimenting with not putting lotion on because I want my skin to be able to heal because the only lotion that's really been helping is Eucerin which I talked about on my previous vlog and uh, that really just like puts a barrier between your skin and the outside world which is great for the healing process but not for long term. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, any other like tips or tricks that you have for anyone who's experiencing this. I know you have, um, in April and May, it was really hard because his hands were so rough because they were so dry. But I know you were struggling like putting on oil like on your skin and whether that be your face, etc. cetera. Um, anything that, any other tips and tricks that would help? Yeah, you know, for me, it's been a mind, body, spirit journey. And of course, as Richard said, we're not doctors and I can't tell you how to treat yourself. I can only share my experience. And I really gave myself the permission to look underneath. Like, what was I going through when this disease showed its ugly face? And what have I been avoiding? So it gave me an opportunity to really look deeper and heal the emotional aspect. I found that there was a lot of anger inside that I had been suppressing and not expressing. And by starting to express that anger, feeling my emotions and really getting out of this like construct that all I have to do is treat the symptom and it'll get better. I've really been looking at what is the cause of this and it was my lack uh, an unwillingness to surrender it was the suppressed anger it was the feeling stuck it was the not doing the things that i always wanted to do in my life and because of that surrender and slowing down it really opened my world to this opportunity to say what can i do differently right here and now 
to heal not just my skin but my emotional body my physical body and my spiritual body yeah that's great uh thank you for sharing that the other element is also um, what you're putting in your body Mm -hmm. Yes, this was a big thing for me. I realized that some of the foods that I were eating were really inflammatory and the inflammation that they were causing, like excess amounts of sugar or uh, non-organic foods, anything that was like heavily pesticide ridden or things like that, which of course not everyone has access to and I understand it's a privilege to eat organic. It was just very important for me to double down on that understanding that the food that I'm putting in my body has a direct impact on yes. the way I'm feeling. Because I notice that when I have like a lot of sugar or I'm not really strict with what I'm putting in my body that I start to itch. Yeah, and then you also will notice that <clears throat> your skin is a lot drier the day after or two mm -hmm. days after. So yeah. really um, focusing on your intake of, of water and liquids and foods that are just hydrating. Yeah, so in the summertime, lots of watermelon, lots of berries, lots Cucumbers. of cucumber, tomatoes. Burdock root. Bur oh, well, yeah, burdock root. We made those burdock root pickles. I'll link the recipe below, actually, um, which were so tasty and delicious. Lots of bone broth. Huh, yeah, that's that's been uh, actually amazing, and I have been even eating it. Um, we'll do like a rice with bone broth, and it's fantastic, super hydrating. Also, um, aloe vera juice. So mm -hmm. that was something that will mix with like like a like a berry juice or calendula tea yes. or milky oats, which are really soothing for the nervous system. I've also been working with an herbalist, which yeah. has been really helpful. Yeah. So, you know, everyone's situation is different. People have had this disease and haven't had as much issues like with their feet and hands cracking. Some people have had it so severely that they can't walk. So it really ranges by person and you know, the best thing to do is, is really, you know, listen to your body. Yeah. What advice would you have for someone who is in relationship with someone going through PRP? Mm -hmm. My advice is take care of yourself um, because the person who, who's experiencing PRP is going to have good days and bad days. And it's important that you're taking care of you first in order to better take care of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, get out, go for walks, get some air. You know, Paul was somewhat cooped up in the house and I had found that I started going, I was going a little stir crazy. So um, yeah, taking care of you and then honoring your needs and your, and your wants and then um, setting time aside, like set, set boundaries, right? So because Paul needed a lot of support there for several months, um, you know, it was kind of like I was on his clock and I was okay with that to a degree, but then I started noticing that, you know, I had just winded down from a long day and was, you know, enjoying my evening and Paul would say, oh, can you do this or can you do that? And can you, you know, rub basically lotion all over my body. That was something I was doing on a daily basis and not just once, but several times a day. Yeah, because there was a point where my hands, because they were so dry and crusty, I would literally cut my face yeah. with my dry hands. So I needed that help. Yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm happy to help. I just think it's one of those things where I had to communicate. I am, I'm happy and I'm willing to do this between the hours of, you know, nine and 10 in the morning and then in the evening between, you know, seven and eight or something like that. So there was a, a mutual like respect of, of one another's time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but yeah, it's, I'm just going to say it's rough. It's, it's rough on the person going through it and it's, it's rough on their partner. Yeah. Um, I had my own, you know, um, fear and concerns and I've researched, I've researched, I think everything in the books. Um, so the dermatologist was like, are you a physician? And I said, no, I just researched absolutely everything I possibly know. So, um, I think we'll cut this now because we are quite a few minutes into this. So well, it's such an, such a pleasure to interview you. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I know you would have just taken the, the show I mean, on the road, Verbosa. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you know, you know. And uh, babe, thanks so much for joining me today. And for all of you that are going through something, whether it's you're going through it or someone that you love is going through it, know that you're not alone. I know that this disease can be very isolating, especially when people don't understand it. Even for Richard at times, he had a hard time understanding what I was going through. And I just want you to know that I'm here for you. Uh, I love the response that these videos have brought. I love creating a community around something that feels so isolating. So make sure to subscribe because there's lots of content coming out. I'll always be talking about my skin until it heals and beyond. I love skincare. And uh, remember, you are worth it. You deserve it. And you are not alone. alone. <laughs> oh, look at that. that. Look what at you. you. Melody here. No, that you were just singing the same note as me. You were not harmonizing. Harmonizing. You were not harmonizing. Okay, fine. Okay, bye.